And welcome to a Wednesday night Bible study here at Faith and Victory Church. And uh, I'm kind of waiting for my page to pop up so I can share it. But um, we are, we're glad to have you tonight. And God is good. Jesus is Lord. And I uh, encourage all of you to um, uh, join us Sunday at 1230. Uh, we are currently meeting um, at New Life Fellow Family Church in uh, High Point, Jamestown address. Um, and on Sunday afternoons, they're uh, being gracious, allow us to use their facility. Um, we still can't meet in a community center we were meeting in. And so they, they've opened their doors to us to hold our services there. So we, um, we um, would invite you to come join us. We uh, just preached this past Sunday on the God who answers by fire. And uh, we're going to be moving on this week to uh, being keepers of the flame. Glory to God. And so uh, you'll want to be here there for that. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so um, Jesus is good. Um, now it finally popped up on mine. And so I'm going to share it for all of our friends to be able to join us. Write the post, post, and we're now shared. Hallelujah. Go ahead and share yours without everybody out there and uh, invite them to join us tonight. <clears throat> I want to talk about tonight um, the word living in us. The word living in us. Um, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Romans 10, 9 and 10, 11, <clears throat> with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed we've said this numerous times over the years uh, faith is of the heart and not of the head the recognition of the lordship of jesus is how we are born again <clears throat> we get born again by confessing him as our lord and believing in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Um, this is done with our spirits, not your head, not your mind. Now, lordship means bread provider. The one who sustains, protects, and cares for us. Uh, we could write this um, title and say the word living in us. We could say it, the living word in us the living word in us remember <coughs> then john's gospel in the first chapter says in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god and nothing made was made that he that he did not make and then it's for verse 14 of that chapter it says and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God. So I remember a number of years ago, <clears throat> I was watching uh, the 700 Club with uh, Pat Robinson was hosting, obviously. Uh, and uh, he had T.L. Osborne on. And he was talking, and, he, and Pat, uh, Brother Pat went off on, about, you know, reincarnations and the religions of, you know, like India with all the reincarnation beliefs. And Brother Osborne stopped him and he says, Pat, that's the mystery of the gospel. I believe in reincarnation. <coughs> and Brother Robinson was, I think he was taken back. I mean, he, he caught him off guard. And he looked at him and at Brother Osborne said, you do? He says, yes. I believe in reincarnation. Christ is reincarnated in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The living word moves into us. He was making a play on words. And I know in the concept of real reincarnation, that's not what we're talking about. But he was, he was making a play on the idea and the term to get a point across the point that as a believer, the, the, the word lives in us. The living word is in us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Remember the mystery that's been hidden from the ages. That is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Christ in you. Just say that. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Praise be to God forever. So when we confess him as Lord, we, we, we major, and, and, and I understand why, and we write, rightfully so, on confessing our sins, Jesus being our Savior, and, and that, is, that is right, theologically, um, doctrinally, it's, it's true, it's correct. But sometimes we emphasize it so far that we lose sight of other things that take place in the new birth. Hallelujah. Um, he's our Savior. He saved us from a burning hell. Uh, he's rescued us from Satan's dominion. Uh, We're grateful to be saved. Um, these are all true. I do, not, I do not intend to demean that in what I'm saying. But there's more to it. The Bible actually doesn't say to, you know, um, that if you'll confess your sins, he'll save you. It says in Romans chapter 10 that if you'll confess him as, uh, if you'll confess him as Lord and believe in your heart, God raises from the dead, you'll be saved. Now, uh, Peter in his great uh, short sermon on the day of Pentecost says, repent and be baptized, everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus and, and you'll be saved. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but when Paul's talking about this, he says that we're to confess Jesus is Lord, or as our Lord, uh, pro probably more accurately. Hallelujah. And believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. Glory to God. Well, what does this mean? Um, let's look if you will, um, the recognition of Jesus is how we're born again. It's done with our spirits, not our heads. It literally means, Lordship, it literally means bread provider, the one who sustains, protects, and cares for us. When we confess his Lordship over our lives, when we confessed him as Lord, when we declared the, you know, we can kind of come at this from several different, but when we declared our submission to him in his rule and authority over our lives, uh, we became sons of God. We became heirs of God. We became joint heirs with Christ. But Jesus takes a position in our life, not just as Savior. Hallelujah. He becomes our bread provider. He becomes the one who sustains us, protects us, hallelujah, and cares for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He becomes the one who sustains us, protects us, and watches over us. Glory to God. Uh, by virtue of his lordship um, <coughs> in our lives, he's become our caretaker he's become our, the other one he's become our caretaker he assumes that responsibility the moment we are born again jesus assumes that responsibility in our life when we are born again glory to god um the father's attitude toward the children is this found in matthew chapter 6 Glory to God. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than um, meat and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. 
They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek after. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Hallelujah. And all these things shall be added unto you. Glory to God. Take no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Notice the Father cares for us. We have had such, in some cases, bad religion. The father's angry with you. The father's going to destroy you. The father's going to splatter you. The father's going to do this. Um, don't even sound like a good, uh, the father, the father's going to know that. Usually we say God. We don't say father. Because we understand the word father brings a connotation. And remember, uh, I, I maybe one of the only places in the Old Testament <clears throat> where we hear, we we get a revelation or an insight into God being Father is, or, or stated, He should be called the everlasting Father. But Jesus comes talking not about God, not about Elohim, not about um, Jehovah. He consistently talks about His Father, and He said this. My Father careth for you. The Father cares for you. And Jesus being the Prince of Peace, the Redeemer and the Savior, and the Lord Almighty, hallelujah, assumes the responsibility as caregiver and overseer of our lives. Glory to God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 states, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Glory to God. Translated, where? Into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. He delivered us from the power or authority of darkness, translating us into his son, kingdom of his dear son. <laughs> so we are in his kingdom. <laughs> we have found his righteousness. I am so glad I do not have to approach God in my righteousness, which is as filthy rags. But I exchanged mine and took on his. 2 Corinthians 5.21 declares, He hath made him sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. <coughs> Glory to God. So, when we were born again, we confessed to him as Lord. We submitted to his authority. Jesus assumed the supreme role in our life, but not as tyrant, not as a dictator. Are you here? Not as an authoritarian to crush us and to make us obey him, but as the loving father who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Glory to God. 
who shed his grace and mercy upon us. Hallelujah. And brought us into his family. We are in the family of God. Romans 8, 14 through 16 declares, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We could really say it this way. They that are led by the Spirit of God are the mature ones of God. Oftentimes in, in um, Jewish thought, I know this is written in Greek, but it's written by a Jew. Okay, Paul was a Jew among the Jews, uh, well-versed, Pharisee, hallelujah, studied at the feet of Gamaliel. He was, he was extremely um, saturated in Jewish thought, and he's, he reveals the new covenant and reveals the new creation man. He could still use those Hebraic mindset statements, and for the Jew... You may be the child of a fam of a father, but you reach sonship, and I think a lot of times around age thirteen in their culture, uh, you you walked in the sonship. You were you were considered mature. So when he says here, they that are led by the Spirit of God doesn't mean the only those that are led by the Spirit of God are born again. It's talking about um, those who have matured into sonship. Um, mature into maturity as a child of God. Okay? For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. <clears throat> the spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The word Abba, there's been some debate on it. Um, it seems that that maybe some of the heavier weight of this word be it was an Aramaic word. Remember Jesus spoke Aramaic also, and um, being more in line with the term "daddy." Okay, and, and the term of affection and endearment, and His Spirit comes into us and endears us to the Father. Hallelujah. I love my natural father. I love my earthly father. Hallelujah. I'm endeared to him. He's my daddy. But my but the father of spirits is my spiritual daddy. I'm endeared to him. I love him. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Or hallelujah or Shandai or something. The spirit, bear, it was the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. We're the children of God. Thank God we're God's children. When you Now look, I'm sorry if you're not born again, you're not the child, the child of God. You know, people use that term loosely in a general sense. Well, humanity came out of God, but because of the fall, if you're not born again, say, Satan's your daddy. Jesus said so, not me. Um, but as a believer... God's our father. We're his child. We're his children. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Can somebody say, help me, Jesus? John, 1 John 1, 3, 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. We are in the family of God. E.W. Kenyon wrote a, a, a wonderful book entitled The Father and His Family. Because this is what redemption was all about. God was not looking for a creation of created robots who must obey his commands. He sought for a creation where he could create, have a, a created being in his likeness after his kind and in his image. 
Remember God said, and let us, Elohim, majesty and the plurality of three or more. Um, he said, let us create man, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, in our image, after our likeness, after our kind, in the, the same class as God. Angels and seraphims and archangels um, and principalities and powers and mights and dominions did not have that position. One created entity <coughs> had that. It's man. At the fall, man was separated. The plan of redemption was instituted in order to reconcile fallen man from being outside the family and brought back into the family of God. Hallelujah. Can somebody give me some hallelujah, glory, shundies out there or something? Praise the Lord. Um, shundies, S-H-A-N-D-A-I, I think, or D-I-A. It's Nobody knows how to spell it. Hallelujah. And not only did we become children of God, Listen to this in Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint. What a revelation. What a statement. This one little scripture has in it. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. <clears throat> and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. Stop. If you listen to a lot of theology, we are, we are scum of the earth, dirty, low down, nothing but rotten dogs, unworthy of anything, profane I mean you just get this idea we're worth nothing but God says that if you're his child you're his heir which would have been great I mean Jesus is the big you know is the is the first begotten from the dead originally the only begotten of the father became the first begotten of the dead seated at the right hand of the father but then the scriptures begin to say things that messes with the carnal, unrenewed, sin-conscious mind. The sin-conscious mind can't handle it. The unrenewed mind can't handle it. <coughs> if you be children then you are heirs of God. Man, wouldn't that just be great? We could just stop right there and run around the house and jump up and down and shout, glory, hallelujah. I mean, speak in tongues. Glory be to God. But Paul, writing by the inspiration of the Spirit, remember, I knew a man about 13 years ago, whether in the body or out of the, or 14 years, I forget which it is now. Uh, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Such a one was caught up into the third heaven and heard things unlawful to be uttered. My view, and, and, and that's substantiated by others, is that when he was stoned and left for dead, he went into heaven and saw the new creation man. And it took him the rest of his life in his epistles to the church and his epistles to his uh, disciples, Timothy and Titus and Philemon, and to the church, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, um, Philippians and Colossians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, hallelujah, and I believe Hebrews. To reveal that. And here's a glimpse. Here's a glimpse of it right here in this scripture. Not only were we become children of God. 
but not a lesser child, an outcast child, a stepchild, a, a um, you know, cinder feller. Now, some of y'all remember the Jerry Lewis movie. It was a it was a, um, com a comedic redo of Cinderella with Cinder Fella, and uh, it's it's hilarious. And um, of course, Jerry Lewis's slapstick always was. But he said, "You're not just a um, child of God. You're an heir of God. Not only you and but then he didn't stop. He just didn't stop." Not only you are you an heir of God, you're a joint heir with Christ. Wow. <clears throat> Remember, Ephesians said, he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Positionally. He's raised us up in Christ. He's raised us up, hallelujah, to sit with him in Christ. But not just an heir, as a joint heir. A, you know, how many have got joint banking accounts? You equally share with what's in there. My wife and I have a joint che checking account, joint savings. We can go, either one of us can go to the bank and withdraw whatever amount of money we want out of there. And the other one can go do the same thing. It's a joint account. And we are joint heirs with Christ. Seated with him. Raised up together, made to sit together. In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. That that just blows the the unrenewed mind. I mean, it, it just uh, I can hear circuits out there cooking. That's all right. We'll get a new motherboard put in. Hallelujah! By renewing your mind to the Word of God. Amen. The Father, remember Jesus said the Father himself careth for us. It wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't just be he's going to heaven and he's going to take care of us. He said the Father himself careth for you. And because of this, the Father assumes his position to care for us and to love us. Can somebody say hallelujah? <laughs> well, I got some glory to God and some hand claps and some hearts going. Thank you. I've quoted this several times or close to this. John 16, 27. The father himself loveth you because you have loved me and believed that I came out from God. Now, if the father loves us just like he loves Jesus. And I'm going to get people who argue and say, nay, it can't be that way. No, God. You know, listen, forget your personal perspectives to demean yourself and allow the light of God's word to come. Jesus made it clear that the Father loves us. Hallelujah. We, he has taken his place to care for us and to love us. Amen. Remember that passage we read uh, earlier um, in opening in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. The Father him knoweth what things you have need of. He's watching over you. Can you say amen? He takes his place as the provider, as the overseer, 
as the nurturer, as the sustainer. Look, I know this. You know, when when we get into the when we get into the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, there are things accomplished that will say the Father cares for us, but it's carried out through the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, there's intercession being made for us. It's carried out through the person of the of the Son, the second person of the Godhead. So. These, these things, you know, go back and forth, but it's God at work. He has assumed his position of care in your life. <coughs> Hallelujah. Now, because he has assumed his position of the, the guardian, the care, the uh, sustainer, the caretaker, we are free to assume our position. Get ready. Buckle your seat belts. Hold on to the sides of your chair. We are to assume our position as sons of God. John 14, 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Hallelujah. We can assume our position as sons. With access, the privilege of access to his very throne. To his very presence. Into his heart. Hallelujah. Anybody get any, are y'all enjoying this out there? Hallelujah. <clears throat> and, and because of this, we can now state, we have his ability. Philippians 4.13 says, um, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Glory to God. We are equipped to meet every challenge that comes against us because we can do all things through Christ, which strengthen us, strengthen, strengthen in us. Woo! Strengtheneth. I think I finally got it that time. <laughs> Took me a time. Getting tongue-tied there. There used to be a... Um, Guy who went around using the reverend term, going to churches, and he would say, and I and I've heard him do it. He say he get people going. I can do all things. I can do all things. Kind of doing, trying to motivate. But when you stand in the church, don't half quote a scripture. Don't short sell the work of God in your life. Remember, he's the care provider. He's the sustainer. As we used to sing, he's the glory and the lifter of my head. Hallelujah. <coughs> and they would get the whole, the whole church going, I can do all things, I can do all things, I can do all things. Trying to motivate people. But because of the key words left out, it had robbed that verse of its power. Because it's not that you can do all things. You cannot, in and of yourself, do all things. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. The anointing, the Holy Spirit working in us, empowers us to do all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? So we have his ability. We have his might. But it's him in us. Remember, we said that you know, the title of this message is um, the word living in us. But I kind of reverse that. The living word in us. Because the living word is in us, these things take place. 
Philippians 4, 19 declares he meets all of our need. He meets our every need. Uh, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Man, that brings an end to worry. Brings an end to fear. Brings an end to doubt. My father is my sustainer. My father is my provider. It's his responsibility. Now, don't take that to the extreme. I'm going to quit my job and go lay down on the couch. That's not what it's talking about. We're to be doers of the word. The hand of the diligent prospers. Okay? But the fact is, what pressure that takes off. I am not my provider. He is my Jehovah Jireh. I think or more properly, Jehovah Yireh. Okay? Um, he's my provider. He's my caretaker. He's my sustainer. <coughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am relieved of the pressure to do his job. Amen. Glory to God. Jane, now listen, we, again, we can come right back. James 1.22 says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So if he's our, if he's our provider, he's our sustainer, then we just need to do what our part is, which is the word. Diligence and faithfulness building our lives according to the word of God and let him take care of the stuff. Amen. Glory to God. And because we're sons, we can fully trust in him. Proverbs three, five and six states, trust in the Lord Jehovah with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, <coughs> and he shall direct thy paths. We spend so much try time trying to direct our own paths. We miss acknowledging him and letting him direct us. We go to God too often and say, Lord, bless this mess. Why don't you just... Let him direct your path. It's already blessed. Amen. I said, amen. Why don't you allow God to be your caretaker? You worship him. You honor him. You do what his word tells you to do. You live in, in a humble relationship with the father. As an heir, a joint heir with Christ, a son of God, a child of God. Relishing and basking in the glory of his love. Can y'all say amen? Hallelujah. Woo. I'm trying to decide if we're going to try to move. We're not going to finish this. Um. This week, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop there. I'm not, I'm not going to go to the next point because I don't want to get kind of halfway into it, have to quit. Uh, if this was a Sunday morning, I'd probably just go ahead and do another, do an hour and a half service. Um, but it's not a Sunday morning; it's Wednesday night. <clears throat> um, take these thoughts with you tonight. These are good things to chew on. Say to yourself. I'm a child of God, but not only am I a child, I'm an heir of God, but not only am I an heir of God, I'm a joint heir with Christ. And the father has bestowed all his love upon me and called me the son of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, that's shouting grounds right there. Anybody agree with me? 
<coughs> that's shouting grounds right there. Say it. I've been raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I know, depending on how you were brought up, what kind of church you grew up in. I grew up classical Pentecostal. We were um, well known for self-emaciation. The more down and out we were, the more pious we were, the more humble we were, the more sanctified we were. <laughs> but when you start saying things like this, your mind could go tilt. But remember, you're quoting and declaring what the word says. <coughs> it doesn't matter what your mind says. It's what the word says. So tell your mind to shut up because the Bible says it. And you just start confessing. The Father loves me. His great love has been bestowed upon me. So much so, he calls me his son. Hallelujah. And when I was, when Christ was raised up from the dead, he raised me up together with him. And not only did he raise me up with Christ, he made me sit together with Christ. Not in the earth, but in heavenly places, I've been seated in Christ Jesus. And I am his child. But not only am I his child, I'm his heir. But I'm not a lesser heir. I'm not down on the totem pole. Not sure what I'm going to get in the will. Because I've been made a joint heir with Christ. <coughs> and have access and privilege to all that the care of the Father provides in Jesus name somebody say hallelujah amen glory to God glory to God so thank you thank you for joining us we're going to receive our offering um, if you're an offering um, reminder you can go to the um, the um, going up on the screen donations at fvc.org is our PayPal um, tag, whatever you want to call it, um, dollar sign, faith, victory, church. The word and is not in there. It's just faith, victory, church. So dollar sign, faith, victory, church is our cash app um, handle. And um, you can give electronically to the church. You can give your tithe during the week and um, support the church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we bless the people as they tithe and they give. We thank you that as sons of God, we, we honor your place in our life with the tithe and offerings. But Father, you're so much greater than anything we can do. Jesus said that if we would give, it would be given unto us good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, men would give unto our bosom. And thank you that the windows of heaven are opened unto us and that you empty out on us blessings we do not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. So happy to have you all. I, I can't see all who join. Um, and sometimes people join and I just don't know who they are out there. But we want to thank all of you for joining us, being here with us tonight. God bless you. You're, the Father has taken up the position of your caretaker in your life. And you take up your position as a son. Hallelujah. And we walk out his purpose in Jesus' name. 
Don't forget Sunday at 1230. Um, probably more like one. We, by the time we get in and get set up, because the other church is leaving, uh, by the time we get in and get set up and get and warmed up, you know, instrument wise, it's more like one o'clock. Um, but we'd love to have you come out in person and join us at new, at the um, at New Life Family Church's building. They're they're letting us use it um, at twelve thirty one o'clock on Sunday. That's uh, sixty seven zero one Ken Coy Road in Jamestown, North Carolina. That is the address sixty seven zero one Ken. Coy, that's K-E-N-C-O-Y Road in Jamestown, North Carolina. Um, love to see you there. God bless you. Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. Good night. See you next time here. Faith and Victory Church online.